Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And today we're going to be talking about five ways to install packages on Linux. Now, if you are new to the Linux world, in the Windows and other worlds we might call applications, either applications or the new trendy apps, and I like to make a distinction between those, maybe you called them programs. Well, in the Linux world, these are called packages. And packages, uh, there's been a shift lately. We have three kind of competing all-in-one package groups, snaps, flat packs, and app images. And then there's other traditional ways of getting applications from repositories. You can download some applications with the internet, but please be careful with that. Um, now there are more than five. Um, we're just gonna kind of cover five of the more popular ones, uh, maybe with a tip of the hat to a few of the others. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, jump on in to top five ways to install packages on Linux. Number one, use the package manager that comes with your distribution. Now, some distributions don't come with a package manager like Arch. That's perfectly okay. You can just go ahead and install them with the terminal or you can actually install a package manager if you want. Um, so, uh, and of course there's gonna be some Arch based systems that do come with package managers. It kind of depends on the, the distro, the, the desktop environment, you know, things like that. But um, for the most part, um, most Linux distributions are gonna have some type of package manager. Now, uh, with a little bit of possible confusion added a little bit later, uh, some of your new package managers will also include the ability to install snaps and or flat packs. Uh, etc. And so that's another thing to keep in mind. But with that being said, let's go ahead and have a, just a very brief look. So we are going to be looking at Linux Mint 19.1 uh, just to look at this video. So in Linux Mint, we have a software manager up here. You might call it software manager. You might see software store, um, you know, package manager, whatever you might see it as. This one here will have the ability to basically install things from the repository, which is the absolute best, most recommended, and safest way to install an application in Linux. Always check here first. Um, and then, of course, Linux Mint has the ability to install flat packs out of the box. So we can click on here and we can see just the individual flat packs available. Um, and most of the other things up here, when you click on it, you'll see if it if it's a flat pack or or if it's a uh, from the repository. Um, so you can actually see um, see what you have when you click in on each individual thing. Let me go to uh, Kaden Live because this is an example which is going to have uh, both the flat pack version here and the non flat pack version over here. Which one do you use? I generally recommend start with this one. Um, you might have a problem where you don't have the latest version. Maybe you need a newer feature. Go with the flat hub in this case. So um, we'll talk more about those uh, a little bit later on. But number one, use your package manager. Number two, this is kind of in between your package manager, which is generally pretty and gooey, and your terminal, which is text and scary. Um, but many of your distributions will either have or have the ability to install either Synaptic that you might find in a Debian based system or Pomac, which you might find inside of an Arch based system. These will give you just simple lists. If you know what you're looking for, you can hit your check marks and go ahead and install applications. Linux Mint being based on Ubuntu and which is based on Debian is going to have Synaptic. So if you just run up Synaptic, you're going to have to enter your password. And now we have this big list of all of the different things that are available. So this pulls from what is in your distribution repository, which is that among that list of the absolute best and the safest way. This is the exact same as installing from the package manager. You're just doing it on a big list instead of doing it through pretty pictures. You can still do searches uh, like maybe we look for email. Um, of course, here you're just going to get a giant list of things versus if you did the same thing on the package manager, it's probably just going to show you the front end things like Thunderbird and Evolution. All right, if you know exactly which package you're looking for, you can just go ahead and type that in and it should get you the list of anything related. So here's Thunderbird, there's a bunch of localities, other things that you may or may not need. Now, sometimes you might install an application that doesn't 
automatically install something from this. So you might need to come into a Synaptic and uh, look to see if there's anything else you might need to install. These localities, we don't need to. These are just language packs for various places. If I were to be installing this on a you know, Portuguese system, I might want to come in here, install my Portuguese language packs for Thunderbird. But uh, that's why this one has is a little bit more comprehensive, a little bit harder to use. Um, again, Pomac is going to be much the same uh, as this. Uh, it's going to just going to be for your Arch systems instead. Number three, use the terminal. Well, once again, unless you're pulling from an external source, and we will get to those external sources a little bit later, but unless you're pulling from an external source, installing with the terminal. This is the thing that a lot of people are like, you need to use the terminal, use Linux. You really don't need to. Um, in most cases these days, if you're on Arch probably, um, unless you've done some work to get around it, like on my Arch system, I've installed Pomac, uh, just because I just find it a little bit more convenient at times if I'm searching for something. Um, but if I know what I want to install, I just go ahead and go into a terminal and install it. On Linux Mint, you generally don't need to touch the terminal, but you always can if you want to. So inside of this, um, now you need to look up on your distribution, what is the way to install a package? If you're on Fedora, it's DNF. If you're on an Arch-based or Manjaro-based, um, you're going to use Pac-Man, not Pomac, but Pac-Man. Yeah, I made that mistake once, whoops. Um, if you're on a Debian system, you're using apt. Um, if you're using, um, you know, there's a few other ones for a few different systems as well. I think Solace has its own new one as well. Um, um, don't remember what OpenSUSE uses. And then there's also Gen2. They'll have their own as well. So on a Debian system, um, you do need to use it as a super user. So sudo and then maybe apt. And then you might need to update, which will refresh your list of repositories. So this is going to go online. It's going to grab the list, make sure that it has the latest updated version of every software. And then what we need to do then, if we want to install something, let's just go ahead and do sudo apt install and let's just install Kodi, which is something I usually install on my systems. Great media player. If you're used to Windows, you might have seen the Windows Media Center. This is basically a, uh, a version of this. So here it's just telling you what it's going to be installing. It's going to tell you the amount of space it's going to be used after this is done. It asks us, do we want to continue? I'm going to hit Y and hit yes. And it's doing its thing. It's downloading and then it's going to be installing. So this one here, it's in the installation process. You can see it's setting up packages. So now if I uh, go into my menu under my sound and video, I now have Kodi installed. So installing via the terminal is a great way to go. Now, all of those three things that we just talked about, these will all generally pull from the distro repository or in those cases as uh, as allowable by your distribution. It might be pulling from the flat packs or the snap packages if you're on Ubuntu um, and some other distros are set up like Solace has snap pack capability built in. Uh, but let's go and talk about that one next. Number four, snaps, flat packs, app images, kind of all in one systems. If you follow my channel, you know this is a little bit of a controversial topic. Some of you really love these. Some of you really hate these. I kind of fall into the I'm not a big fan uh, comment, but they are a, a force that we need to be uh, aware of. They need to be something we know how to work with. And definitely we need to be able to experiment with them. You know, these are not going to get better until people get, get up there and actually start using them a little bit. Uh, and there's different discussions and debates, but we're just talking about how to install things. So we're not going to go ahead and uh, talk about the merits, pros, cons of these. We're just going to talk about how to install them. So there are three. Um, uh, snap uh, or Snapcraft is where the site snapcraft.io is the uh, repository for your snap packages. This is the one that is spearheaded by Ubuntu. So you can actually come over here and any distribution can get set up to use snap packages. And uh, you can come over here, snapcraft.io forward slash store, and you can get a lot of the different, um, uh, you can get the, the variety of different um, uh, applications that are available. So you can see there's just a lot of applications. There's going to be a lot of things in here. And if you want to go ahead and install something like, let's see, we saw Telegram in there before. Maybe you want to use Telegram. Eh, it was, oh, we're under development. My apologies. 
Gotta search for the right cat categories. There we go. So there's a Telegram desktop. So if I wanted to go ahead and install this, on the website, I can hit install. I can pick um, different versions of it. There's betas, there's the stables. Um, if you are in, in Ubuntu, the software center will allow you the option to install, install the snap version, or the other option is you can go back into your system and do a, I don't, I don't remember if you have to do sudo or not. I can't remember if you have to do sudo, um, but it's uh, snap install and then the package name which in this case would be telegram desktop now linux mint does not have this installed by default and so this will fail if i try and run it but that's actually how you would run the uh, snap package so you can go ahead and install them any of those methods uh, your um, software center right from the website if you have it set up or from the terminal. Flatpak is what Linux Mint has by default. In fact, if you click into any of the distro pictures here, you'll see, oh, it's already there. No setup is required. Um, if you're running Ubuntu, it's going to tell you how to install it. So this is, of course, your terminal command that we've already done. Installing the Flatpak will give you the ability to install it. This is on 1810 or later, 1904 also. If you are using an older version, you need to install the, um, the PPAs. And then you just go ahead and install the application. So installing the plugin for it. So here is installing the repository. So you can look up how to do it. Uh, Linux Mint, as we saw, already has flat packs uh, enabled. Um, the other way that you can grab them is come on over to the website. Um, now, I will do a brief note here just so you guys are aware. If you head to the website, they actually have a slight misconfigure of their DNS. If I get the chance, I'm going to email them about it. Or if somebody from Flat uh, who controls this or communicates with them um, would like to tell them, please do so. If you come over here and you come on down here to browse the apps, um, it's going to sit here and keep spinning like this. They have their DNS goofed up a little bit. Come up here, put the www in front of that. It'll fix it. <laughs> just a little whoopsies. Um, so um, if you see that spinning, just make sure you're at www.flathub.org. And then here you can just decide what you want to install. Um, so in this case, grab GIMP. You can go ahead and hit the install button over here. And that's going to install the flat pack. All right, now app images is the last one. Uh, these ones are the ones you pretty much just go and you find them like the old Windows applications. It's just unlike the old Windows applications, you don't have to uh, install. Um, so you can see that they have a variety of different uh, applications, a variety of different systems they work with. Um, it's basically all packaged up. Now it's harder to find them. There is this list, um, this GitHub list, which has all of the variety um, applications, you will notice that it is no longer maintained. So there might be a better list out there. If you know of one, please put it in the comments down below. Um, but this will is just a, a list of different things. So for example, uh, Krita is on this list. And so if we click on this, it's going to take us to Krita's website. So on Krita's website, we have an app image here. We have Ubuntu PPA, we have a flat pack, and uh, the Ugen2 guys have your own. All right. Uh, so you can download the app image here. I've already downloaded this onto the desktop of the system. To make an app image work, let's get rid of that terminal. So here's our app image. Um, so to make an app image work, what we're going to do is right click on it. So if you just download it and double click it, it's just going to do this. We don't want that. You want to right click it, go down to properties, permissions tab, allow executing file as a program, close, now double click it and it will open itself right up. So you can store these in your home folder, applications, wherever, and then just create, uh, just kind of point to them. That's okay, uh, whichever one of those you want to go ahead and do. So here is the full Krita running as an app image uh, on the system. So that is your number four ways to install an application. And number five, you can just download an application, run it, manually install it. Um, there's a few different things in here. So the best example is I did a video a while back about how to install Waterfox system-wide. So if you are looking at the Waterfox browser and download it, it gives you this 
zip file. Well, it's a BZ2 file, really. Uh, basically a tarball, it just gives you this in which when we extract it, we get this folder here. Now, with this folder here, the application is actually down inside of here. So I just double clicked this and it asks us, do we want to import whatever else? Go ahead and hit next and it's going to run Waterfox. So there you go. There's how to run Waterfox. So how do you actually get these things to work? Well, if you really want them inside of your menus and all these kinds of things, I do have that video about how to manually install it. So I'm not going to cover it in fine detail here. But what you need to do is you need to create what is called a desktop file. Now, this does not go on your desktop, despite its name. This actually goes under USR Share Applications. All right. Um, so if you were to go into your main file system here, uh, we find our uh, USR folder we find our share, we find our applications, and this is actually where all of your various applications happen to be on your system, all right? Now, what we need to do is all of these guys here are actually a .desktop file. So a .desktop file is simply a list which tells you what is the name of the application, what's the generic name, what is the execution path, Here's, are we loading in the terminal or not? Um, where is the icon for this going to be found? What type is it? What category is it? Et cetera, et cetera. So if we were to take this guy and drop it into here, and as long as Waterfox is where the system expects to find it, then it will work. You can actually run this on any directory. We could leave it right here and it would run just fine, although it would probably be a little bit annoying. Again, consult the other video for how to do that. Now for my Arch system, I don't really care that it's in the system or not. I just dropped the Waterfox um, zip un uh, unzipped folder directly into my home directory and just dragged this guy down onto the menu down here <laughs> and uh, because you could um, drag it down there and... Um, I'm not sure I can drag it down there. I'd have to go down in there and drop it down there just because I don't have this configured for dragging and dropping those. But I can basically create a shortcut for it down here, add the icon that I want. Hey, no big deal. It's not installed system-wide, but that's okay because it's used very limited. So you can actually do any application very much like that. Just manually install it, download it, manually install it. So what did we miss out on? We didn't talk about .deb packages, .rpm packages, which is kind of an older way of packaging a Debian or an RPM uh, folder or file uh, for installation. We didn't talk about making packages. We didn't talk about compiling them. Those are all ways as well. Um, but this here is just five basic ways that you can install applications on Linux. Let me know your favorite ways to install applications. Um, what's your uh, favorite way to install them? Do you love the terminal more? Do you love the GUI software centers more? Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. You can help support the channel by having a look at the links above me or in the comments down below and follow along on the social media to get updates as to our video releases.